Hey guys, Brian Beeler coming to you from the lower lab here at Storage Review. As you know, if you follow us, you saw last week that we did a lot of content around TrueNAS Core 12 and some of the exciting things that are happening there with IX Systems and the FreeNAS community and all the other great things that they've got going on. So it got us thinking about what TrueNAS Core is all about, what the capabilities are, and how we could leverage um, the things we have in our lab uh, with TrueNAS Core to create some more content, see where it goes. And we happen to have a crazy Canadian that's part of the team uh, that wants to really, really, really get his hands on a system running TrueNAS Core and see what it's all about. So what we've done actually is we dug up and, and resurfaced our HPE uh, microserver Gen 10 Plus. It had been sitting shamefully in a corner of the uh, upper lab, waiting for something to do, wanting something to do, wanting to serve a purpose. So we've dusted it off quite literally. Uh, we do run an open air data center and it has been pollen season in Cincinnati. So we dusted it off, took it apart, and we're going to get it operational. So a couple things that we're gonna do, we're gonna drop a, uh, a USB drive in there. That's um, actually a USB adapter with a, a micro SD card inside. We're gonna use that as the install target for the TrueNAS. Uh, we're going to put three, what do we got? Iron Wolf NAS, these are the regulars, not the pros. 14 terabyte Seagate drives in here for capacity. And then we've also got this wee little uh, SATA 6 guy, uh, 240 gig Iron Wolf 110 SSD. We'll use that for caching or logs or something else uh, creative, I'm sure. So the plan really is pretty simple. We're gonna put this back together with all of its new components in it. And um, we actually have since removed the 25 gig card, so we'll just be using the, the onboard gigabit for this. And of course, we will definitely be taking advantage of the uh, of the ILO access, uh, working with a remote uh, lab guy in Canada. He'll be able to log in to ILO, install the, um, uh, the ISO and, and get operational. Uh, so, you know, we think about all these little microservers and, uh, and small IoT and edge devices and having that out of band management for stuff like this is really handy. Now, you're not gonna wanna do this at home, but we don't have the adapter sled or have one handy for the SSD. So it's going to be gently and lovingly secured and dangled from its SATA port adapter. Again, not ideal, but we have what we have. One of the other things that we liked when we did the uh, initial hardware review on this guy were the screws that came in the front. And uh, it actually took me a second to figure out what the deal is with those. But these screws, I've already done most of them. Uh, but they go into the uh, the sides of the hard drive. So while we don't have an adapter for the two and a half inch SSD, actually we probably have one. We're just, oh, this, there's one on the floor over there. Okay, but while we didn't use the adapter for the two and a half inch SSD, we will use these little screws for uh, the hard drives to hold them into place. They slide in on these little rails and click in so reassuringly. And then if you ever need to pop them out, ooh, pretty glad that didn't launch onto the floor. And we'll put this guy in. We're all secure, except for the one dangly piece. We will uh, put the, the lid back on and then uh, secure this and, and, uh, and get it operational. So after we configured the HPE microserver, dropped in the hard drives, a little bit of flash, uh, for caching, went ahead and connected it to uh, networking and, and everything in our lower lab at uh, the storage review office. And then we did the unthinkable. We turned it over to our favorite Canadian, Blaze, who joins me now. Blaze, thanks for jumping in. It's a pleasure to be here. So Blaze is a, a longtime free NAS enthusiast. In fact, he has a tattoo uh, on his right forearm of such, left, I left think. Forearm. My bad, my bad. Left, left for him. Uh, and so Blaze has used this uh, free NAS quite a bit. And all we did was get uh, the HPE bootable and Blaze took over from there uh, using ILO to get going. And in fact, he documented that process. We've posted that on the storage view site. So for anyone looking to understand how to get operational from essentially zero on true NAS, Blaze wrote up a, a great guide for that. Uh, but Blaze did all of that from outside Toronto down to our lab in Cincinnati over the VPN. 
how'd you find that process out of the gate? I think with ILO, it made things seamless. It was dead simple to set up. And I found that uh, what really surprised me is that I was actually able to mount a disk image remotely here and have, uh, have ILO utilize that uh, that image on the server uh, at Ohio. Yeah, that's a pretty slick way of going about it. And one of the nice things of having out of band management on anything, really, you know, a lot of uh, the more consumer centric uh, boxes that uh, home libraries will play with or even small businesses might use won't necessarily have that capability. So a nice thing, especially when you're a long way away. So we've got the dashboard pulled up for TrueNAS. Why don't you just give us a quick tour of, uh, of what we're dealing with here? So when we sign in, what we're, what we're greeted with is it's just the, the base operation. So the, the critical information, if you will. Uh, you have your, your CPU stats, you have uh, your memory loads, uh, but more importantly, you have your pool information. So if you, if you pull up, um, let's say create uh, three or four different pools, uh, you'll have just a quick, at a glance view of, uh, of what you're seeing in front of you. Uh, you have the ability to, to drill down uh, with, uh, with full reporting, uh, which has been a nice feature that, uh, that came with the UI refresh in 11.2, I believe. They, they moved FreeNAS, TrueNAS over to, uh, to the new layout. So, I mean, with, with reporting, it makes it dead simple to just select your, uh, select your device, select your pool, and you can just give it metrics and away it goes. Look at all those pretty charts. <laughs> yeah, it makes, uh, it makes drilling down and getting, uh, getting data, uh, Dead simple. Uh, I mean, we've got uh, pretty much the uh, a full GUI that uh, that is very intuitive on how you can go about getting uh, getting your information. So you know, you've got your your accounts details. Uh, you want to create groups or users. Uh, I mean, again, and we we covered uh, covered this very basically in the uh, in the tutorial how to go about that create new users. Uh, you have your, your system information. You can go in and see what your, your boot environments are. You can Which, set up reporting. Uh, now just take a second and, and maybe, you know, we can look at the drives too, and just sort of re sure. remind people what we've done, because I've got to say, when I walked past this, um, th this HPE server that's set up in our lower lab, so I pass it every time I go get coffee or or a, uh, a water from the uh, the break room. And one day I walk past and I can ju it just glance out of my eye and, and see it sitting on top of the rack. And then I walk by a couple hours later and notice a blue glowy light, which was not there before. Uh, it appears that while Kevin uh, set this up for you with, we, we did the Iron Wolf hard drives, Iron Wolf SSD. He also slammed in the, uh, uh, the Fire CUDA portable SSD into this thing too. So just kind of walk through what, what you've done with these things. I think it's uh, kind of curious. So what we've got is we have the four, four drives, the, uh, the four internal drive base on the unit populated with three of the 14 terabyte uh, Iron Wolf hard drives and one Iron Wolf solid state drive that we're, we set up as a cache. But one of the great things about ZFS is that it gives you the ability to have deduplication right on the, uh, right on the, on, on the pool. One of the features that you can set is to have a dedicated drive for your deduplication. That was accomplished by allowing us to use that external, uh, external solid state drive as a dedicated deduplication uh, drive. Now, would a sane person do that over USB? Um, I, I'm thinking with, with these new solid state drives that uh, I, I would. <laughs> <laughs> I, I okay. would. I've, I've, I've had a great experience with the, uh, with the Samsung drives. I, 
I'd like to think that it would be safe enough to uh, to accomplish on one of the uh, one of their external drives. All right. So as long as nobody's your... going to trip over the cord. Yeah, we verified you're crazy. So carrying on. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So as a longtime FreeNAS user, what else stands out to you on this uh, Alpha TrueNAS code? Anything else really interesting to you? Well, one of the things that I've been really anxious to, to get my hands on has been the, uh, the ability to save metadata for the drives on, on a dedicated uh, device pool. Uh, unfortunately, that's not something that I was able to, to fully test at this point. However, it is a function that is easily uh, permitted. Uh, and I mean, to accomplish uh, accomplish that, it's just right in the pool management under uh, under VDEV. So we can actually come right in out of VDEV. If we had another uh, another pool or another drive to add, mm -hmm. then uh, then it would allow us to to add that uh, add that right in. However, it does need more than uh, more than the three drives, unfortunately, for uh, for it to be added all there. So, what do you want me to do? Go slam some more USB drives in this thing? Well, you know, we could we could try taking uh, taking another <laughs> three drives in there, and it, it might. But I, I, I'd be more worried about Kevin perhaps tri tripping over the cord. And well, uh, <laughs> I am crazy after all, right? <laughs> yeah, there's a good chance that dangling an octopus worth of uh, SSDs off the back of that thing may not end well for us. Um, yeah, you know, that's that's one of the trade-offs. The, the HPE, uh, this is the microserver Gen 10 Plus, is such a neat, really neat little device. Um, and I, I know that there's people out there that are already splitting the SATA ports and, and squeezing in more two and a half inch drives and that sort of thing. And for the tinkerers, for the home labbers, that's a lot of fun. And, and, and uh, well, heck, even we put in a 25 gig card and installed ESXi on it at one point in time. So uh, there's definitely a lot of flexibility there. But yeah, to your point, you know, having a more dense chassis would you know, free up some more alternatives there. Well, I mean, at the price point, though, you you can't get something with you know with ILO management and with uh, with a Xeon and I mean, that setup without going white box. I mean, right. This this really does fit a need. Yeah, it uh, it is. It, it's very capable. It's flexible. But anytime you get something like that the the uh, the tinkerer and all of us just wants a little bit more <laughs> wants Kevin wants 10g on board and an m.2 slot on board which not insurmountable from a design standpoint but then you know the couple hundred dollar box probably pushes up over you know a thousand dollars or more at that point but uh, you know hard hard to say exactly and and I'm sure HP will take some of that into the the next generation their challenge I think with this was, you know, they're going after the SMB, uh, very SMB, small office, small professional office market that doesn't really have a performance need per se. Uh, so that's why we see the three and a half inch bays in there and one gig on board. But, you know, the the home labbers, the, uh, even the uh, systems provider, solution providers can really get behind having this more enterprise-y light server instead of, you know, a more consumer gear at the uh, at the end location so um yeah this is pretty cool anything else that that you want to show off here that that you found appealing i'm very excited to see when they uh, they start to release the new uh new version of this that is based on linux rather than bsd from... uh this the true nest scale yes the true nest scale yes that'll be uh that'll be exciting uh, we're going to have to wait a little while for that one. Uh, but until then, you know, we just wanted to provide you guys with a, another look at, uh, at TrueNAS Core as we continue to experiment there and experiment with different hardware and show its capabilities. And uh, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate the feedback. So let us know what you think, and uh, we'll uh, be back soon with another video.